Yeah, you should try that. Tell me what you think. Just knead it up. PBJ? PBJ. I just gave the one I really needed to you. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> What's up? I'm Kevin Love. I'm here at the GQ offices, and these are my essentials. Okay, my most essential is my bag. So I've had this, uh, this Louis bag for a while. I collect vintage patches. And on this one here, I try to theme them out. Uh, it's kind of like an era's bag, but also 90s and a bow to, you know, showing love to my hometown. Like I have Portland Fire and Rescue, obviously Nintendo, Powell's Books, Portland, Oregon, Jurassic Park, first movie I ever saw in theaters. I closed my eyes when the uh, T-Rex was screaming. Love the superhero vibe. You know, Batman and Robin Powell, you have the Avengers, X-Men, Infinity Gauntlet, uh, Nightcrawler, obviously Stone Cold is the centerpiece. The finals is actually a patch from the year that we won it in 2016. I thought that was cool. Beach Boys, that's a shout out to my uncle, Rolling Stones. High fives, like, you know, equality, we can all get along. That's very relevant to the times now. Stormtrooper. And then, uh, what up, Steve Brule? Some Pendleton cards. 16 no cards and envelopes because I like to write handwritten cards. I think it's a lost art. My grandmother used to do it. She was a cornerstone of our family. Holidays, birthdays, uh, random soft Tuesday in February, uh, my grandma would write cards. So these are something that I like to do. I also love the Navajo print on them. Southwestern vibe, uh, shout out Shiprock Santa Fe. I love their pins, I love their turquoise. I love everything that they have there. So don't let me make my way to Santa Fe because I will uh, I'll break the bank there, so. 2013 Promontory, Napa Valley, red wine. Here, I'll actually take it out of here. It's a cab. 2013, and if you know me, you know that if we're together, we will always eat well together, and maybe even more so, we will drink well together. And more likely than not, it'll be wine. I collect the corks, I kind of put them in either a Nike box, like I put a lot of my things, or you know, I'll put it in an open decanter that I have that I put these in. So I like to take also Polaroids, and I use the Polaroids to kind of mark the moment and mark the year of the wine and that sort of thing. So wine plays a big part in, in my everyday life. Actually, the wine culture in the NBA has become a pretty pretty big thing. You know, some guys have made their own wines. Uh, I know that Yao Ming has his own wine. I've had his before. I've had Dwayne Wade's wine. I know that Channing Fry. I've shared a lot of wine with him, uh, Richard Jefferson, but uh, going back to Channing, he actually is in the process of creating his own wine. So there's a lot of even younger guys adopting that, but I'd like to think that I was one of the, uh, the early adopters on, on that tip, so. My next essential is my camera. Bring it with me everywhere. I like to think I'm a professional, but um, I'm not. But it captures moments. I didn't take enough pictures growing up. I know that there's something to be said to, to live in the moment or capture the moment, but when you have a good camera, there's nothing quite like it. You know, it's nice to have this with me as much as I can. It's pretty lightweight, nice to travel with. You know, kind of throw it around my neck, take these photos here, and it's a beautiful thing. Split nutrition. It's two great foods, one fast pack. It's peanut butter and blueberry spread. And it's a superfood. I mean, I carry this with me everywhere when, especially when I'm on the go. I'm actually really hungry right now, so I might have it. If you ask any of my teammates or the people that know me, I have either uh, an almond butter with, uh, you know, raspberry, blueberry, strawberry spread, or a peanut butter, same thing. It's nostalgic for me. It's amazing. I feel like a, you know, a kid who gets to eat his peanut butter and jelly sandwich a few times a day and during a workout, and it makes me feel good. Finals. I love music, has it all in the back. Marvin Gaye collected, unbelievable. There's four sides, two, two uh, vinyls in there. One of the absolute best covers, especially to a vinyl ever, is Sticky Fingers by the Rolling Stones. And I mean, it has brown sugar, Can't You Hear Me Knocking, Moonlight Mile, Wild Horses, but this is my favorite little feature here to open it. We're here in NYC, one of the best to ever do it. Black Album, no brainer. I have a Macintosh player uh, at my apartment, um, very into vinyls. Like I'll go to the Chateau Marmont and I will go to their record player 
and just start searching through everything. And usually it's like, you know, Motown era, it's old school rock and roll, but then they'll, you know, kind of throw in, you know, some like Florence and the Machine, Alabama Shakes, all the way to, to old school and new school rap, like the early 90s rap all the way through uh, today's era. So it's, it's, a, uh, it's a fun thing to get to play DJ with vinyls. It's just a different feel to it and a different sound. So my next essential, I actually have to take one of my shoes off. So I, I wear them all the time. I've worn them my entire life. As a lot of you know, I grew up in Portland, Oregon. And Nike started in Portland, Oregon. It's an Air Force One. Culturally, it has broken barriers. It's a complex shoe in itself, but at the same time, it's very simple and timeless. I'll throw it on with a suit or I'll dress it way down and wear it to, you know, the gym. So, except it was a size 18. Yeah, 17 or 18, that's a beautiful thing about Nike. Them being able to uh, make the bigger sizes in the right shoes has been uh, very key to my aesthetics growing up. Okay, so this book was given to me by my therapist and is one of my 10 essentials. Lincoln's melancholy and about how his uh, depression fueled him into great things and um, how uh, really the, the landscape of, of mental health and mental we uh, wellness and illness has just changed over time. So this book to me is, has really taught me a lot since I've been on my, my journey and now started my own fund. It's crazy how much he has done to uh, further those conversations. This is a, a very special book and for anybody either dealing with it or not, because there will be somebody at arm's reach that's dealing with something uh, mental health related, this is an incredible book to, to, to pick up. If you want to find out more about my fund, just uh, you know, at Kevin Love Fund, it's found, uh, you can type that in uh, you know, on any uh, search engine as well, and it'll it'll come up and see how you can get involved. But it's for physical and uh, you know, emotional well-being, and uh, you know, finding out tools to to service the masses. This thing doesn't discriminate. So, yeah, Kevin Love Fund, check it out. My next essential would be my watch or my timepiece, if you want to get super fancy. It's my uh, day date Rolex, rose gold, beautiful <sighs> chocolate brown face. I do not have it set right now because I was in a little bit of a rush this morning. But no, this is a beautiful watch. Uh, you know, I mentioned the word timeless a lot. It's classy. And um, I look at it and it's a reminder that I don't have a Paul Newman Daytona. So maybe, maybe in time that'll be uh, a goal of mine. So no, that's one of my essentials, beautiful. Another essential mine is actually this ring right here. Well, it looks just like a, uh, your typical ring to throw on. It's actually a movement and even more so a sleep detector. So I get to uh, break down my sleep every single night. It's called an aura ring. And I you know, kind of wake up, see how I'm feeling, check the uh, aura app on my phone. It breaks down my deep sleep, my REM sleep, my restfulness, how many times I woke up during the night we all feel sleep deprived. So this is a great way to not only check up on that, but keep myself in check and make sure that I'm getting the proper amount of sleep because you know, to go about your day successfully from a physical and uh, mental wellness standpoint, this is, this is very key, it helps me. My three by one bespoke jacket. So I have a uh, great denim from, from 3x1. Uh, they do an amazing job. Uh, being from Portland, Oregon, I'm, I'm the lumberjack guy. I throw on the boots, I throw on the hoodie, I throw on the denim. Do a lot of Canadian tuxedos. I mismatch denim, 3x1 uh, there. Their jackets, their jeans, uh, you know, really anything there that you can get and, and handcrafted and handmade for yourself is, is a win. All right, so I love hats. There's times where I wake up in the morning and usually on a Saturday where I just want to go get a coffee, walk down the street, be messy. Saturday's NYC. They have great colorways. The hat's deep enough to fit on this big head and I love their stuff. And then I don't know if I ever say this right, but it's D-Hen 1920. It's uh, out of Portland, Oregon. It's actually 
kind of a tip of the hat, if you will, to uh, the state flag. Obviously this one's wool, so uh, more so worn in the uh, fall or winter, but this is a great summer hat and you can throw on with a white tee or throw on with denim, whatever you want.